Braves against the Detroit Lions. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. It's the 10th anniversary of this beautiful big uh, stadium, and we're here to give you this game between, of course, the hometown Detroit team and Dallas. I'm Tom Brookshire, along with former Super Bowl coach Dick Vermeil. Uh, we know how good Dallas looked at the, on that opening game against Washington. We also did the game where Darrell Rogers' team won his first down in Atlanta. But this might be Operation Overload. Uh, <laughs> what does Detroit have to do, really, against this tough Dallas team? Well, Tom, first, Detroit has to play great defense to keep, you know, keep the game close enough to win. But secondly, offensively, they've got to keep Dallas's nickel defense on the bench. They don't want to bring those guys that did such a good job on the field Monday night and give them a chance to do the same thing again. They've got to run the ball efficiently on first and second downs. All right, Dallas has won that toss. Eddie, Eddie Murray will kick off number three. Lavette will run it back. Poe, the rookie, and James Jones will be in the mi middle, number 23. Eddie Murray, one of the best kickers in football. From the 35, it's underway. 75,000 people here. This is Lavette. Lavette at the four-yard line. Lavette hit hard and dropped at the nine-yard line. Good coverage by the Lions. Here's the offense for Dallas. Danny White at quarterback. Tony Dorsett. A little bit sore, but he had a pretty good opening game for being a holdout. Newsom, the big fellow at full. Tony Hill and Mike Renfro, two great outside receivers. Up front, it's Pazderak, Tit Titansor, Rafferty, Peterson, Jim Cooper, and the giant tight end, Doug Cosby. We'll set that defensive lineup for Detroit in just a moment. They're playing the 34 this year here under Darrell Rodgers. That is Danny White. At the 20 yard line, first and 10. Single back is Tony Dorsett. The toss back to Dorsett going weak side. Gets over a couple of people, breaks out. Dorsett to the 32 yard line. A first down already. Here's the defense. Eric Williams at left defensive end. Doug English, the all pro, the pro bowler, now playing nose tackle and doing a good job. And William Gay at end. It's Williams. Curley and Harrell have had to exchange inside linebacking spots, and Michael Kofer has got speed and size on the outside. Here's where they're in trouble. Watkins is injured. McNaughton is injured. Johnson, Demetrius, is the only healthy one, and William Graham is going to play anyway. They are hurt in the secondary. I'm talking about Detroit. First and ten, coming right out. Ball on the 32-yard line. First play action pass. It's a screen developing. Danny White throw, intercepted. William Gay intercepts. Doug English got in the face of Danny White and William Gay with an INT. Take a look at this now. You're going to see a play action fake. Now watch right in the middle of your screen. Coming out now, C-79 to the right side of your screen. He did not rush upfield. Danny White did not see him. William Gay gets a big one. I, that might be the first interception of his career. And, of course, Danny White uh, controlled himself. He didn't have a great throwing game against Washington, but he didn't have any interceptions. The first one today on INT. We'll set the Detroit offense. This is Hipple. Illegal procedure, perhaps the nervousness of the offense not being ready to come on the field. False start prior to the snap. Number 51, offense, still first down. David Jones, you'd think he'd be lining up over in Randy White. He's lining on the other side, jumping off that early. Here's the Detroit offense. Eric Kippel, he did not have a great throwing day against Atlanta, but he did uh, survive it. He came through it and he won the ball game. Montgomery, Rick Kane is in now as James Jones is not going to play. He's got a bad thigh, the big, good fullbacks. Up front, Sloan McBrown, Dietrich, Mott, Jones, Dorney, and Reese McCall is in at tight end. Lewis is injured. James Jones is playing at fullback. We did not think he would, number 30. But the blitz is on. Grabbing the face mask by Clink Scale. Strong they safety blitz. They got the sack, but they also have a penalty. Focus your attention on the left side of the screen here. You're going to see him coming from behind. See him right there, number 47, Dexter Klingskill. No prayer to throw the football, but he did grab the face mask. Of course, not on purpose. Hey, that's still the first down. We'll see. Uh, face mask, we'll number 45, 7. Number 47, defense. Still first down. Back to the line of scrimmage. The crowd loves it. But yeah. We'll see seven-man defensive secondaries, five, six-pack, they call it. A lot of different 
changes on the defense for Dallas, huh? Tom, I think the other thing we're going to see, we're going to see more safeties involved in coming up, getting after Detroit's young offense. It's new, it's immature, and that it's a new coaching staff putting it all together. They're liable to take advantage of it with stuff, stuff like that. Jones is going to play in there, number 30. He had a bad thigh hurt in uh, the warm-up before the ball game, but he's going to play anyway. He's the remaining back. Hipple is the caller on first and 10 from the 21. Knocked away and almost intercepted by number 50, Jeff Rohr. Wilbert Montgomery was split out as a wide receiver on the strong safety, Dexter Cliscale, and they tried to get the tight end out underneath him, using Wilbert to clear it out. But Jeff Rohr really, Jeff Rohr really did a nice job. The Dallas defense, and they're all number ones up front. That's where they've spent them through the years. Ed Jones, John Dutton, Randy White, and Jim Jeffcoat. Well, those are four quality players. Hegman, Lockhart, Rohr, who just made that last uh, good play on defense. Walls, Dennis Thurman is starting, Clink Scale, and Michael Downs. Fellows didn't make the trip, of course. He has that injured knee, and he's back in Dallas. For about a four-yard gain, Wilbert Montgomery's first carry, number 28. Not a bad idea to run on second down and long. To go ahead and see if you can't get four and five yards running and move it into that third and five category. You get third and six plus and that kind of thing, Dallas will probably come after him with some kind of a pressure rush. Either one guy, two guy, or three uh, defensive backs. We're right on the edge of that, third down and five. There's, of course, Wilbert Montgomery with his first carry, and there's the blue sport-coated Tom Landry. Just couldn't find a permanent position in Dallas. He's yeah. been there for 27 years. What a great coach. Third down and five. Rick Kane is in there now. And they're going to try to protect against the blitz. They're all out. Hit the last time and overthrows Chadwick by a mile. Dallas came up and faked the blitz, then backed out and played their regular coverage, and it might have just put a little pressure on Chad, on, excuse me, on Hipple, you know, mentally. He sees him all up there. Do you see that running back move up and get in position there to pick him up? Big advantage if uh, Murray could put him on the scoreboard. This will be held at the uh, 24 and a half yard line. Eric Kippel will be holding, and of course, Murray is about a 74% kicker from this distance. How does it look? It looks great for the people here. Number three is hot. The last kick he had against Dallas, he had 12 men on the field, and they still counted it. It's 3-0 Detroit. Well, 13-32 left in the first quarter. It's already 3-0 with an interception setting up the Murray field goal. Daryl Rogers, the new head coach here, has been in college as a head coach for like 20 years. Uh, is that the same, Dick? Uh, you came from UCLA to the Eagles. What was that like as an adjustment? Tom, it's a lot tougher to coach pro football. There's no bad football teams. There's no bad players. They're all good. It takes a better football coach, I think, to be successful in pro football than it does in college. Of course, your players aren't ineligible. If they can show up and they're healthy, they can play. Murray's kick is high. That's Levette at the two-yard line. A high kickoff. Should be quick coverage, and he's tripped up at the 21-yard line. Don't forget, following this clam bake that we're having right here between Detroit and Dallas, coming up you'll have the Giants against Green Bay or Atlanta, San Francisco, or the New Orleans Saints visiting the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado, or maybe Minnesota against Tampa Bay. And we know how Bud Grant's turned around that program just by coming back to training camp. Right now we have Danny White coming out, number 11. The numbers on there have one interception, which he just threw, and William Gay picked off on the first screen pass. First and 10, call it the 21 yards. Quick drop for an outside. Tony Hill has it. Steps out at the 30 and a half. Danny White's uh, actually throwing the ball pretty well when you consider he's wearing a, a flak uh, jacket, you know, to protect his ribs. Here's a picture of it on the screen. Did you ever wear anything like that? Gosh, I'd be afraid to. You know, in our days, if you wore that in the dress room, you might get in trouble or something. <laughs> he actually got hurt in the San Diego game in preseason, and he just picked up about almost 10 yards with that throw to Tony Hill, and Watkins didn't have him closely covered at all. It's second and inches. Right at the 30-yard line. Inside handoff. That's Luke. Wow, he goes for the 35-yard line in a hurry. Harrell making the tackle there, the inside linebacker. Now, scores from elsewhere, the... Los Angeles Rams on top of the Eagles, 7-0. Young Cunningham is playing for the Eagles in his first start, the rookie quarterback. Chicago, 7-0 over New England. There are two good football teams going in the first quarter. I bet that ends up being a heck of a football game. 
That'll be good. Two good defenses. A lot of number ones, twos, and threes on those two squads. First and ten for Dallas. They trail three nothing. Quick drop outside. Almost picked off. Intended for Tony Hill and McNorton was there. Tommy. We get here Friday to watch practice. McNorton's on the sideline, hadn't practiced all week, and here he is watching the right-hand side of your screen, number 29. He backs up. Now watch him plant and drive and dissect that ball. Reach, dive, ball. Nice job. Really a nice job of playing defense. And you know one thing, he's not tired. And he was injured in the first quarter, has a badly sprained ankle, but he's taped it up, and everybody's come to play for Detroit. Brings up a second down and 10. Ball right on the 35, call it. They're into the eye. That's Dorsett. Hit hard. In the, back in the offensive pattern, Angelo King shot the gap. A loss of a yard and a half for Dorsett. Angelo King is a former cowboy. He might have a little uh, extra motivation going for him here today, Tom. <laughs> Amazing, the Dallas Cowboy program. And they checked in a Detroit hotel yesterday. There had to be a thousand people with their young people down there to get autographs. They, they certainly are well known all over this country, all over the world, really. Third down at 12, facing Danny White in the office. They're having some problems. From the shotgun, White rushed, hits door set. It's a fumble. Let's see. The flags are down. Hold the phone. Hit door set, catch it and fumble it. Let's see what the call is. You know, sitting up here, I didn't think he caught it. I didn't think he had possession. Let's see, Detroit is clapping like they may have it. Pass interference, number 33, offense, penalty decline, first down. The, the referee is Jerry Seaman. He's told you they're offsetting. You can see they're putting some pressure on Danny White with linebackers up inside. He lays the ball off right over the middle. I don't think he really had possession of that football. The second it turnover like officially. The second turnover as Detroit has the football on the 36-yard line. First and 10. There's Chadwick in motion. Hand off. Wilbert Montgomery over the top. Montgomery to the 26. He's had some great days in the past for the Eagles against Dallas. Yes, he has. You know, of course, I've seen him do it every time. He's great out of that eye formation. You'll see him deep right to the right side of your screen. It's going to be a deep handoff. See the cutback hole inside number 70. Reese McCall, number 81, does a nice turnout job right there. Look at him go up over the top. Boy, love to see that guy run. Right off the side where Dorney holds down that tackle position, the pro bowler. First and 10 rush. Montgomery into the middle, running hard to the 21-yard line. And Detroit is putting on pressure in the first period. Whoop. Wilbert really gets himself ready to play, Cowboys, because in the Eagle program, we always set the Cowboys up as the team to beat. And we actually, over the years, developed a hate for him just as a motivational factor because we had so much respect for him. But Wilbert's carried the ball 211 times in his career against those guys for 901 yards. A real hate, huh? Despise, yeah. is that a good word? But yes, you had to, just out of respect. Second down and six. Out of sheer necessity, Hipple is driving the line. They've got another break of turnover. Here's the play action pass. Hit it with time. Going for the corner and a touchdown. Chadwick. had two touchdowns last week against Atlanta, but none bigger than that at home. Murray now will try the extra point. He's got 157 in a row for the extra point. The Hipple hole is scrambled, but it's good. 158 extra points in a row, and there's the man of the hour. From Great Valley State to the top of the world, it's 10 nothing. There's Chadwick, number 89, a 6'10 high jumper. And there's the man that threw it. He just beat Walls on a post 
corner move. He took him inside like he's going to the post, then broke to the corner, and Walls actually gave up on it at the end. He was beaten so badly. The personal foul call was on McCall, who was, of course, blocking at the tight end side of that extra point formation, and he must have literally uh, fought back. That's a pretty tough place to be on the extra points anyway. That guy, in talking to him, he says the only kind of coverage he doesn't like, this Chadwick there, number 89, the middle of your screen, he doesn't like bump and run coverage, Tom, when they come up and press him. He says he's not physically strong enough to get away from it, but if you play him back off, he loves it. Is this a good way to play Dallas? Obviously, getting out to 10-0 is not bad. Yeah, but I'll tell you this. In coaching against uh, Tom Landry and his coaching staff, uh, you you cannot assume anything. They've experienced yeah. everything through yeah. their great careers, haven't That's they? That's right. I've seen them win more games with a minute to go in the fourth quarter than any team in football. Poe and Levette are back now for Dallas. Eddie Murray will be kicking off. Here he is. Man from down south. I feel he's got to be in the top two or three kickers in the whole league. Here's that touchdown, Coach Vermeil. Chadwick there is on the right-hand side of your screen, number 84. He's a good-looking guy. Now, watch him take, make that move to the post. See him go way in there. Now, come back to the corner. You see Walls, number 24. He beat him so bad, taking away the inside, he couldn't recover to take away the outside and cover it. There it is. Touchdown. Now Both they, foot down. They went single O against... Uh, the Washington receivers and seemed to cover them very well. In fact, one of the outstanding performances I've ever seen. Yeah, but it was a different uh, formation in this case. Remember, that was the three wide receiver formations. And, all that kind of and it's a different day. Here's Eddie Murray's kickoff, a tremendous kick. Poe is going to be eight yards deep, and he'll be told to touch it down. Murray's got this crowd fired up. And if you're a Dallas fan, you'll never forget he kicked the field goal as seconds ran out in 81 with at least 12 men on the field and maybe 20. I think I think Tex Ram thought there was about 15 guys out there. Boy, would that upset you? Oh, yeah. Huh? I mean, I, I would have a heart attack right there. The good Lord giveth, the good Lord taketh away sometimes. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. Danny White's pro offense at the pro set behind him. Checking out. Across the middle, Cosby has it. Cosby to the 31 for a first down. August Curley hanging on. An interception and a fumble, both result in points. You know, Tommy, the Bud Goody computer system that I subscribe to tells me that an interception, one more than your opponent gets, is worth five points in the winning margin. A fumble worth three points. Right now, we're up 10 to nothing. The Detroit Lions are, so he's only one point off. And six interceptions that Landry's team got against Washington makes the 30-point margin almost. That's right. I like the numbers. First and 10, the shift goes for the Dallas Cowboys. First and 10, out to Cosby again to the 37-yard line. Big target. Demetrius Johnson knocking the six foot six tight end out of bounds. Tom, Dallas has passed the ball on first down every time except the very first snap of the game. The game plan starting to unfold really early in this first quarter. And it brings up second and pretty short to go. Second and three coming up now as White is beginning to sort of settle everything down. The Monday night blues are over, fellas. We got to play a tough team here today. Alone back, Tony D, Tony Dorsett. Long call, straight drop by Danny White. Across the middle, Cosby catches his third pass to the road to the 40-yard line of Detroit. Graham just is undersized. Of course, everybody is against Cosby. He's 6'6", 248. That was a double zone. Now there's a little action to freeze the linebackers on the part of Danny White right there. The little back crossed in front of him there. Cosby gets down the hole because the linebacker let him off the line of scrimmage cleanly. He's right in between the two deep safeties. Will Hall, number 33, gives him lunch. Nice play by Danny White and Cosby. And Graham, of course, is 5'11", 191, and he's got to give away about six inches at least. First and ten. The Cowboys are moving and they're winging it. Long back is Dorsett. He gets the misdirection off the right side. Dorsett barely tripped up inside the 35 by Johnson, and that was almost to the sidelines, and see you later. He, he darn near got through there, as you'll see in ground level right here. Watch the offensive guard, Titans are number 63, right to the right of your screen. Here he comes, number 63, the BYU graduate, blocks on Jim Williams, 
Paul's Derrick goes up inside number 75 at six foot nine, 280 pounds leading through. Almost popped him through there. You almost had him at UCLA for a while, didn't you? Titans, sir. He was there for two years. Second down and four. Good block, and Tony Dorsett almost went. Here's the play action pass. For Tony Hill, who has it at the 20, spins and is now wrapped up by two Lions. Watkins and Graham, good looking move downfield by number 80. You know what his best move was, though, Tom? It was a move in vertical depth. He pushed deep. There's play action. You'll freeze the linebackers. See that Harrell, number 58, take the run fake. Now watch right here in the middle of your screen. See him push all the way down. Now come back and catch that ball. Great timing. He goes high for the ball and gets it tucked away. He faked in vertical depth. He pushed that corner off him. They said he really wants to come back and play. He's been one of the great clutch receivers in big games. Drove me of all crazy. Time. Drove me crazy. He's driving Detroit crazy now. The Lions trading 10 0 They're driving inside Dorset. Not much. Stacked up by that 34 at the 17. Harrell, the linebacker, plugging well. Of course, driving me crazy as a coach was a short trip. <laughs> Especially against Dallas. Yeah, very short trip. I thought Tony Dorsett last night, but we sat with him, was very relaxed, and his composure was good, and he made sense. If you were making his money, you'd make sense. <laughs> right, Tom? <laughs> he said the worst thing, though, was thinking maybe he wouldn't be back with the team, you That's know? That's right. The he, like, out. he likes the new boxing schemes, too. More man-to-man -man physical getting after him. He is in good shape for somebody that hasn't been to training camp. Right to the outside, and it's, it's going to be called good at the seven-yard line. McNorton trying to keep Mike Renfro from getting the feet down. Wow, what a catch. If that one is a good catch, that's some catch. There he is, right to the left of your screen. 82, Mike Renfro. Watch him drive in, break for the out. Bobby McNorton, number, Bruce McNorton, 29, driving on the ball. He goes for it right there. Is he inbounds? We better look from another angle. Let's see if we can see that right to the right of your screen. He's inbounds. He's inbounds. Good call, Mr. Official, sir. And he was right on top of it. Mike Renfro being helped off on the Dallas sideline. First and 10. First and goal. Flags are down. Let's see what happened on that. Gonzalez was the motion man who's in for Mike Renfro. Gary Seaman. False start prior to the snap. Number 63, offense, still first down. You can see right here in the middle of your screen, both the left guard, Titanser, and left tackle moved a little bit early. Can't do that, guys. I thought offensive linemen did that all the time. Oh, oh okay. Oh, it's not like Dallas to do that. Anticipate the count. It's still first down. Goal, but it's now back on the 12-yard line. Renfro's back in the game, number 82, who made the dazzling catch He's to the bottom of the screen. Number 33, William Graham, spiked it and almost made a great, great interception. Boy, I tell you, Danny White took a shot in the back from William Gay, number 79. You'll see Danny White right here. He's back in there. You can barely find him. He rolls a little bit to his left. Now watch the hit. Boom. 280-pound defensive lineman really gave him a shot. Will goes up for it, number 33 there, and almost gets his own batted ball. Of course, Graham played his college ball at Texas. There's a little bit of feeling there, I'm sure, too. He's had a real good first quarter, 6.45. Left in the first period, pin nothing. Detroit over Dallas. Dallas has got a move right now. Second down, 11 to go for a touchdown. Inside, Newton in hard. Looks like Doug English and company. Jimmy Williams, the linebacker. Williams out of Nebraska with great speed. They were in a nickel defense that time with four down linemen changing up. See the four down linemen right in the middle of your screen. Jimmy Williams, number 59, attacking the center, does a nice job on Rafferty, takes on the fullback and stuffs him right on the line of scrimmage. Nice play, Mr. Williams. Was Detroit uh, anticipating the pass on that? They must have because the down there, that's long yardage. That's second and 12, second, 11 yards to go. Third down and 11 to go for a touchdown. The shotgun. Danny White's the receiver. Now. The blitz is on, but it's intercepted. Intercepted.
William Graham takes the ball to the bench. It's 10 nothing Detroit. William Graham right here in your screen. Excuse me, our chalkboard is not working real well, but you'll see him right there in the middle of the screen playing inside Cosby, number 84. He comes underneath him right there and picks him off. Danny White was under an awful lot of pressure at that time. Tom, watch the pressure. Look at here. I don't think anybody could throw the ball real well in this situation. Look at him. That's a tremendous hit. Alvin Hall coming with the blitz from the outside. Huh? Yes, safety. safety blitz to the other side. Two interceptions, one by Gay, the defensive end, and one by William Graham, the safety man. It's first and 10 from the 20. Detroit dodges the bullet. Inside hand, a Wilbur hit hard at the line of scrimmage, and the Cowboys are getting mad. You know, Tom, uh, the Redskins coming off the Monday night great game. They may be a little bit down mentally right now, and Detroit is doing a hell of a job, I think, of getting them refired up by playing so well right now. You're getting me fired up, Coach. I'm ready to go myself. <laughs> oh, hey, now, come on. Let's not uh, get too excited here. There's not enough Novocaine around to get me out there to play anymore. Second down and nine. Good defensive play by Dutton. As we said, there's quality on that line of scrimmage. Those four people are all number one drafts. Second down and call it nine. Hipple in the I formation is Detroit. The roll outside. Hipple setting up, going outside and overthrowing Leonard Thompson, who was closely covered by Walls and and Clink Scale both. They came back with the same corner pattern that they scored the touchdown on earlier in the ball game and tried it again out here in the open field. It didn't work. Walls was sitting off there now, almost looking for it. Rams 10, Philadelphia 3. And that's not in the second period yet. Robinson's team is in the click. If they get Dickerson back, look out. Seven all, Cincinnati and St. Louis. Two good football teams in that one. What a day for football here on CBS. Third down and nine. Gotta be careful, Ty. Mr. Hipple. Jones down the back, and he finds the tight end. Enough, I believe, for a first down. It's gonna be close, Tom. McDonald made a good catch, and Hipple really laid that one on the tight end's hand. You know, the big rookie number one draft choice, Lomas Brown, number 75, playing left tackle, did a nice job. Look at the left side of your screen. He's blocking another number one draft choice. Look at the pr uh, protection time. A lot of time to throw the ball. McDonald acquired from Los Angeles, makes his first reception in the Hawaiian blue and silver. That's not too bad for a first down to get out of the hole. A 10-0 lead with 4.35 left in the first. Detroit has come to play. First and 10. Ball right on the 30. Hipple is the quarterback. In a close battle with Ferguson in preseason, he won Darrell Rodgers in starting now. Quick drop outside. Thompson. Thompson in the 42-yard line. Walls a little late getting there. Leonard Thompson has really world-class speed, too. Here he is right here. It's a little hitch pass, driving straight up field. Now watch him turn right back to the quarterback. Remember this, fans. He was a fine running back in college, and he can make me people miss. Dennis Thurman, number 32, doesn't do a good job. Here comes Roar, number 50, and finishes him off. There's on the state boy doing his job. Another first down for Detroit. Out of danger somewhat. Attacking the Dallas front four. Oh, good play defensively. Ed Jones stops Wilbur Montgomery for a at least one yard loss. Detroit would be smart, I think, using my experience in the past of playing the Cowboys, to throw a lot of those high efficiency things on, on first down. Try to get to that second and four and second and three situation, then run it. Now they're in trouble. Second down and eleven. I think Wilbur Montgomery would agree with you, particularly after that last call. <laughs> three eleven in the first period. A shocking quarter. 10 0 Detroit. The four quarters make a football game, however. Chadwick's in motion. This direction. Jones out over the 40 to the 42 yard line. Mike Hegman riding him down. Randy White is the guy that really made the play on that one, though. Hegman helped him out, but Randy White came from the backside of the play away from it and really got after him. That guy is maybe the finest defensive lineman in football. Weighing 272 pounds now. And, of course, he's been all pro seven straight times. Detroit, 10, Dallas, nothing. A field goal by Eddie Murray. And a touchdown catch by Chadley. 
three turnovers by Dallas, and you're caught up to date. It's 2.20 in the first period. Third down and 10, dangerous call for the Lion quarterback, Hipple. Inside shot of the top, who drops the football. Leonard Thompson simply looked away, and the ball was not thrown Still should have caught it. Yep. Should have caught the ball. He might have looked up and saw Victor Scott, number 22, inside him right there and didn't want any part of it. Here he is. You can see that. Sort of a little under pattern, huh? <laughs> I tell you, when you're coming down underneath people like that, you have a natural tendency, and it takes great discipline not to take your eyes off that ball. I mean, it really does. Mike Black has a 40 one uh, party 45 yard average against atlanta a week ago leon gonzalez the brilliant rookie he also has speed be careful <laughs> that's why they call him speedy gonzalez, <laughs> gonzalez that's right fourth, fourth down and call it then here's black's kick it is not a great kick but it's got a fair hang time gonzalez at the 24 takes it and is spun down right on his tracks a dangerous hang time of 3-8 a 28-yard punt, about a one-yard return. Detroit 10, Dallas nothing. Well, we're a little bit surprised that rather than the Monday Night Blues, I think this might be the, the hometown opener for Rogers' new team. Maybe the guys are uh, just playing real well for Detroit. Yeah, and they've had the turnovers, and that's way too early, of course, to determine the outcome or predict it. But I haven't coached against the Cowboys for so long. Just watch. And then it's going to be a very tight, intense game here in the fourth quarter. I, I like it. We got 2:04 left in the first. Danny White is eight of 11, two interceptions, however, and obviously no cigar yet. Motion man is Renfro coming through the formation. Toss to the weak side. Dorsett. Dorsett breaks out. Cody Dorsett knocked out of bounds around the 39-yard line by William Graham, who's a very busy secondary man. We're going to try this chalkboard again, see if it's working right now. You're going to see... You're going to see the man going in motion across the screen. <laughs> Evidently, it's not working right now. Sorry, fans. We've been known to have a few technical problems with that. He breaks in that scene. Nice block, kick out, nice lead. Dorsett running rather easily. Remember, he didn't get much practice at all before he opened against Washington. He had 70 yards rushing. Only a few days ago, and he said he was darn sore. First and 10 at the Dorset. Blast of 10 yards out over the 42-yard line. Timmy Newsom, big man with speed, straight ahead. Eric Williams making the tackle there. The second-year defensive end that Doug English thinks is going to be a tremendous 34 player at defensive end. There he is, number 76. Bulked himself up to 280 pounds. Doug English says, you're going to start playing, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Doug English, I'll tell you, he's as a journeyman a player and a consistent player as there is. Second down and seven on the 41. White falls down. He's okay. Nobody touched him down. That's a completion. Newsom has it close to a first down at the 49. Nobody touched the quarterback down. He could get back up on his own. Let's see if it's a first. It's short of midfield. Fast thinking. See the line flex like that, go up and down. That sort of throws the rush off. He picks up the ball. He trips right there. Most of the time, they trip on the center's foot as he comes out. That's what happens most of the time in a ball game on the practice field. The quarterback, many times, Tom, will step forward with one foot. The center's coming back, and he'll step on it. The career numbers. These two teams have not played each other a lot. The last time, as we said, was up here in 81. Tom Landry, he remembers that day. He probably has tried to blunt that from his mind. You Third down and less than one. I don't think you ever forget those days. You, know, you just learn to live with it. Trying to put him somewhere deep in the computer bank and not call upon him. Dallas 0-2 on these third down conversions. Of course, on Monday night, they shocked the Redskins, who we think is really a good football team. Yard formation, the power eye, Newsom and then Dorset. Dorset on the toss behind Newsom's block. Dorset moved to Detroit territory to the 48. Power football. When Dallas has never accused of power football. 
Watch Jimmy Williams, number 59, pursue to the ball. He's going inside out on it. He gets picked off. Nice block by the offensive lineman. Tony turns up inside and gets the first down. Peterson picking up that block on the linebacker made the first down just into Detroit territory. 20 seconds, closing seconds now of the first quarter, and it's been a surprising Detroit period. 10-0. Two interceptions and a fumble on the Dallas offensive side. Just twice, on first down. Play action, he's got a lot of time. Oh, Cosby has to go in and out of his hands at the 45, and Tony Hill was running free at the 10-yard line. Then he came off the deep post pattern a little bit too soon, and he really had him. He uses a little play action fake to freeze. Look at Curly number 50 going in there on the rush, 58. Right there, August Curly rather is tied up in there. Excuse me, that's James Harrell. Look how open Tony Hill is here on the, the corner post move. Look at him. Oh, he's saying, you didn't get me the ball. And they always do that when they're open down there. Yeah. They never let you forget it. Second down and 10. Last play of the first period is about to be snapped off. Double wing, inside handoff. Two more set, more set, gets the block. Now he's dumped at the 47-yard line by Clarence Chapman. And what a period of Detroit football. Detroit 10, the Dallas Cowboys nothing. Well, this beautiful Silver Dome here in Pontiac, Michigan, it's about 10 years old. In fact, they're having the anniversary this this year. But back in March, they had what they called a freak storm here in Michigan, and and the roof was just torn up and, and collapsed right inside. They've redone it for you people that are gourmets. That's a Teflon-coated bag that's over this beautiful building. Cost of $50 million a few years ago and one of the great playing areas in the all, the whole world really one of the great in this country this is one of the great places to do a game you know I mean, we ought to have hors d'oeuvres and cocktails if they're so comfortable you know? it was so comfortable that, that danny white had two interceptions they fumbled <laughs> once and the cowboys trailed 10 nothing now it's third down and seven to start this second period and that's the shotgun third down and seven outside quickly tony hill has it and steps out at the 34 and a half yard line of detroit alvin hall there remember this Detroit secondary, they, these kids are really playing hurt. Well, they, they weren't even on the field this week in practice. Like I said earlier in the broadcast, they were on the bench watching Friday's practice. All banged up. One guy, who was at Watkins, number 27, he was on crutches. And Galloway, the fellow that went in and played corner against the Atlanta team, so well broke his arm in the fourth period of last week's game, so he couldn't be counted on. So McNorton and Watkins are playing hurt and playing pretty darn well. First and 10, good catch by Tony Hill. Will Hill. The handoff, Dorsett breaks off the block to the 20, to the 14, 13 yard line, tumbling. Good open field tackle by William Graham or he would have scored. Cross formation draw play. Tony read the draw block real nice by his offensive left tackle. Tony's going to cross the screen. Number 33, see him now. Now's a block now. See the lead block, number 30. Newsom gets a nice block. Look at that hole, Brookie. You can run in that one. Look at now. A little move there. Graham does a nice job of blocking them down. Watch the offensive left side of the line here. Oh, no time. Let's get back to the ball game. And the Cowboys only averaged 107 yards rushing all last year. It looks like they're tuned up behind that healthy offensive line. First down call outside the door. Then he drops the ball. That may be a lateral. They've got to be careful of that one. Might have been a little forward, but you've got to be very careful on the outside that those aren't a lateral. Dallas is one of the better screen teams in football, and Detroit is very alert today with the screens. It was a screen earlier in the game that they intercepted. Now, see Dorsett going to the right of the screen? There he is. He's out there. He has two linemen out there to block for him. Cooper, number 61. I mean, he was going out there to block, but no ball, no catch. And just remember that Dorsett and his agents, they all held out together for quite a while, and he <laughs> hasn't had a lot of action, and that finesse stuff might be the... Last part to come back, second down and 10. The, the ball is down there on the 15 yard line. The, the blitz is on and Danny White is sacked. No fumble. Alvin Hall from the outside on the blitz.
Darrell Rogers doesn't get excited about anything. He's going to come off the right side of your screen. I'm surprised that Danny White did not see the blitz coming. You can see the rush coming up inside, number 50, August Curley. Now, see it from the right side of your screen? Boom. Boy, I'll tell you, that's tough. You should be able to see that on your first step out from underneath the center. An experienced quarterback, that is. Wayne Fonts is the coordinator. He used to be with Tampa Bay. He's got a little bit of a blitz package today, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Third down and 21. A bad throw, and it's caught anywhere at the five-yard line by Mike Renfro. was a mallard I can't believe on third and 21 you can get that ball down in there but Renfro and the running there right number 82 see the single coverage up underneath now he turns around he's getting help with the safety he catches the ball right up between the safety and Watkins 27 a super catch I'll tell you that guy comes to play and he, and he did a hang job up there of about four seconds just waiting for the ball to get there it was not thrown beautifully <laughs> Ray Renfro's son, and that's good genetics. Yeah. He knows what a Dallas football looks like. He was the ball boy when his dad was a player. I used to chase his father into the end zone a lot. I've won a lot of replays of the old man scoring. <laughs> <laughs> Number 82, what a catch. Dallas is threatening. Hey, it's Detroit, 10 nothing. Makes the first down to the three. It wasn't a first down where the officials placed the ball. Dorsett had to use all of his skills to get it. More than skill, he had to use his speed that time. I thought he was gonna get trapped in the backfield. Tony D is shaking his head like, how long can they string out a play going wide? <laughs> Here he comes, getting outside. Now you can see Demetrius Johnson, 21, chasing him inside out. He just made that thing. Titanser was out in front, but barely, but that's good. First and goal from the three. Inside handoff. Flags are down. Did somebody jump early? It look, appeared so. That was Newsom. Illegal substitution. Number 75 did not report. Derek did not report, and Landry's not sure the call was right. Boz Derek was in the game. The guy that didn't report was 66, Chris Schultz. Chris Schultz, the big guy, goes to left tackle. Paz Derek moves to tight end. Jim Myers is all the way out on the field, and Landry, I don't think I've ever seen Tom out that far in the middle of the field. He wants a clarification, and is not getting any. Jim Myers, the Long-time offensive line coach for the Dallas Cowboys. That's the kind of team you want to coach when you can't get the players off yeah. the field. Gil Brandt's getting into the act now. I think that's Cornwell, the big tight end. They finally got off. Hang in there. This game is getting exciting. 10 nothing, Detroit. Cooled off and composed. The Cowboys come up on first and eight. First down and eight. Landry was not satisfied, but he tried to get an explanation for that last penalty. Newsom is the most of man coming inside. Outside, quickly, to Dorsett. Dorsett to the two-yard line. White got the ball right to it. And Harrell or Harrell, the linebacker, barely made the tackle on Tony D. Tony Dorsett's flipping right out of the backfield to the right side of your screen. They had a double slant pattern going on outside, which Tom many times ends up being a double pick down in there that tight, but Detroit wasn't playing that tight of coverage. It amazes me that Tony Dorsett is the fourth all-time leading receiver in the Dallas Cowboys history. We don't even think about him catching the ball, but you can see he does. It's second down and two, second goal for the two. The fake by Danny White. Is he going to run it? He throws, and it's out of the end zone, and hit it for Cosby. Good defense. Good defense. 
defense, a lot of pressure put on by Coker, the big linebacker. He's six foot five, playing linebacker, and he He's, got right in White's face. They run a little play action fake right here, and now he watch him naked bootleg right out to the right. Kofer, number 55, can run like a deer. He puts the heat on him. They weren't counting on him coming from the backside like that, Tom. That play is designed to work in front of the quarterback, and he doesn't expect that guy from behind him. Third down and two. You saw the conversions, two of five for Dallas. They have no points yet. Pro set, inside move. No, no. At the one-yard line, he stopped. Kofer, number 55, shoulder to shoulder. It was very intense in there. You see Graham, number 33, working up. He's just a defensive back. He's going up to get his pads on him. He says, hey, I can hit like a linebacker. Then the defense really rallies. I'll tell you, if they can stop him here, this is a great confidence builder, Tom. Tom Landry is not going for the field goal. The Dallas Cowboys trail 10 to nothing. Fourth down and a yard. On the one foot line. You can see that he definitely did not get in. He's hit. He's trying to get up into the end zone now, right there, and he was hit right before he could leap and get up over the top. No, not even close, Tom. That new 34 defense is something. It's 10 nothing still. Well, there's the broad back of Bach, who made that great defense. He played down <laughs> close. 16 plays and no points for the Cowboys. And Hipple's going to try to get some room. He sneaks it out to about the two or three yard line. Randy White in there along with Lockhart. Here's another look at a goal line stand. The right side of your screen, number 58, Harold, the linebacker, Kurt. That's it. Number 65, the right guard, Kurt Peterson, gets out and block him. Steve Buck works up underneath the play and puts it down. There he is. He must be an excited man right now. Another excited man might be one of our 75,000 here. The commissioner, Pete Roselle, is here with Mr. Ford watching the Detroit game. And I'll tell you, the Lions have opened at home in style so far. It's 10 nothing, 9.54 left before halftime. Second down and eight, facing Hippo. Straight handoff, a little bit of a misdirection. And Kane comes out to the eight and a half yard line. You should not be able to make cutback runs like that one, Tom, against the flex defense. It is normally very tough to do that because it is designed to fill the gaps and prevent those kind of plays. And Landry said that the a lot of the sophistication is on defense these days. You've got to disguise everything, don't you? And That's use right. different fronts. Detroit doing an exceptional job. What a game plan they put together. Their new coach, Daryl Rogers. Third down and two. On the nine, Hipple back to throw, going deep, trying for Chadwick and overthrowing Chadwick, who was bumped a little bit at the 30-yard line by Thurman. Must be calling incidental contact now. Coming off the line of scrid, uh, scrimmage, Chadwick pushing down there. He's got it. Thurman turned. Thurman not the... It's actually offensive bump, not a defensive bump, because what? he ran right into him. Dennis Thurman's a crafty quarter man. He got right in his way. <laughs> now look at Chadwick. He's turning. He's pointing. Thurman's a pretty smart corner. Rather play safety, I think, but he's a pretty smart corner. Mike Black is in the end zone, kicking out of the Lions end zone off the blue. Be careful time against the Cowboys. The brilliant Leon Gonzalez waits on the Dallas 45. This is not a good punt. Black gets it on the ground, bounces at the 46-yard line, it'll be touched down at the 47. Dallas will get the football. They still haven't gotten any points. A 39-yard punt. Scores from elsewhere around the NFL today. Second week of this 1985 season. Must be a shutout. <laughs> yeah, so far. As we wait for those scores to come up. And scores of other games. 
Boy, that's a beautiful place. Look at that end zone shot right there. There's one. The Ten to six. The Rams are, uh, uh, hey, the game, game's getting tighter. The old Eagles coming on. Eagles are back on there. One of those scores for the Rams is an 80-yard punt return by Henry Allard, one of the best. Miami sixth. Indianapolis nothing. Play, Indianapolis playing much better this year. The Jets 7-3 over Buffalo, and they're almost at halftime in that. Battle for New York. Here we we have a 10-0 game. The Cowboys, Washington 16, Houston 3 in the second quarter. Here the Cowboys just took 6.20 off the clock and ran 16 plays and were kept from the goal line with a good goal line stand by the Lions, and they're setting up this time in Detroit territory. Here's Danny White throwing on first down and hitting Tony Hill at the 35. He'll knock back to the 37. That shows you how important a punter being able to punt out of his own end zone efficiently is. You know, Mike Black did not do a good job that time, and here they are sitting on the plus side of the 50-yard line. That's a short field. It's a lot of pressure on punters and, of course, kickers all the time, but this year in particular, don't you think the punters really have to perform with that 45-man squad? They've got to be really a good punter. I believe you're right, Tom. They, you know, of course, a punter has to be good at any time, but when he has to be at his best is when he's kicking out of his own end zone. Good point, Coach. First and 10 on the 36-yard line. Five-yard pickup by the Cowboys. Newsom dances inside, makes a good cut over the 35 to the 33. You know, there's a little uh, war starting to brew on the field between Paz Derrick, the left tackle, number 75 for the Cowboys, and William Gay, the defensive right end, number 79. They've had their arms up and looked like they were going to go a round or two about three times already. Hope we get to sign them if they have a fight. <laughs> the one thing that Tom Landry was talking about last night to us was that he's finally got a young offensive line that's not only healthy, but it's gigantic in size. And it he said big. we can move people around now. Second down and nine. Detroit not giving way much. Dorsett's gone in motion. The split is on. White unloads it, and it's going to be caught. It's a good catch. A diving catch by Renfro, and that's the second superb catch he's made today. Randy took a shot. He might have to come out of there. Hogelboom is looking for his helmet right now. Danny White did a quick read on that. And the safety blitz was coming. Is that the way quarterbacks converse? Do they just give signals? Here's the catch right to the sideline. You know, the fans boot, but he's definitely inbounds. Both knees were inbounds, even. Danny White, a tough umbry. Make no mistake about it. He's the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. The coach said that without any hesitation. First and 10, White back. Dumps it over, knocked away. Beautiful play. By Jimmy Williams, reaching around Cosby. Jimmy, excuse me, uh, Jimmy Williams is a real gifted athlete. He goes all the way back to walking on, not recruited at Nebraska. Now you believe to that? being a number one draft choice. I, th I think that's you the way he walked out there and asked yeah. Osborne to play. His huh? brother went with him. Toby, he's playing defensive end at, at, at New England. You know, I think that's a, really an inspiration for youngsters. You don't have to always be the guy with a scholarship to end up being the player. Second down and 10 on the 25-yard line. The Cowboys have been shut out so far. It's 10-0 Detroit. And Eflin reads the blitz, dumps it outside, and overthrows Renfro and Bobby Watkins. Boy, that 37 defense that Fonts came in with looks like it's going to be gobbled up in this Motor City. Fonts with his little cigar. He doesn't have his cigar right now, but wasn't that a great impression that Dennis Thurman did of his old college coach <laughs> last night? Dennis Thurman playing in the secondary for the Cowboys was coached by this man through college, and he, he really is a, a unique personality, that guy. And Wayne said that they used to beat themselves by being too sophisticated. Now they just want to strap it on and go get the Cowboys, play them even. There's a down for a rush. The rush is on. White reads it and overthrows Tony Hill at the 12-yard line. Here's a case of really 
the rush being picked up and letting him throw the ball in time, and he rushed the throw. He didn't have to throw the ball, Tom, as quickly as he did, and therefore he threw it inaccurately. He should have taken his time. He has enough experience to take a little more time there and recognize when he has to or doesn't have to let it go. And Tony Hill was open. He had enough room to make the kick. Oh, yes, he definitely did. Raphael Septien, uh, one of the most accurate kickers in the game from the 42. It'll be a 42-yarder. He's 46% in his career from this distance. Hogan Broom holds. It's on his way. It is no good. It was wide right. Detroit holds. It's 10-0. Don't tell me there's not a special frat. Look at Saxon, the young punter, standing with Septian by themselves as Ward, the conditioning coach, sort of stands there. That's a different different world. A field goal kicker, when he misses one, needs a friend, and normally it's the punter. <laughs> normally it's the punter. <laughs> a great kicker for the Cowboys, Septian. That's just a little beyond his range, perhaps, at 42. Uh, he, should make it. he should make that. Game. First and 10, Hipple back with 6.53 left before halftime. That's Jones. Caught 77 passes a year ago, but he really hurt himself warming up that thigh, and we thought maybe he wouldn't play at all today. Well, it must have been a bad pull. It must have been just a strain. Number one draft. What a great all-purpose player to have with Wilbert Montgomery in your backfield. Before halftime, Bears lead New England 7-0. They got that defense humming, huh? See, a 32-yard pass. McMahon to McKinnon, the only score, and that's not an off-track. It's good weather. New England. Second down and seven. The ball in the 28. Quickly outside. Hit it to Jones. Jones to the 50 into Dallas territory to the 46 yard line. He should never be out there that cleanly. Evidently, Hagman, number 58, blew the coverage. You can see clean scale number 47 going inside with a tight end. Reese McCall, there's Hagman, 58. He got fouled up in his pass drop, turned the fullback loose. Here he is. I would have to fault Hagman, number 58, for this. Now you got a truck horse here, 235 pounds. <laughs> Bad tackle right there by Dexter Cleanscale, number 47. Good moves by James Jones. A 36-yard reception by James Jones. He had 125 total yards against Atlanta last week. First and 10 on the 46. The quick roll, reverse the throw. And Chadwick broke his pattern off. And Hipple is dropped at the 45. Jesse Penn, number 59, playing right outside linebacker, got some heat on Hipple and forced him to throw it. They had dog coverage, meaning man-to-man. -man. If he'd have had time, he might have had a big one right there. Jesse Penn has speed. Number, they're really high on that guy. Number 59, Jesse Penn. Eight career pass interceptions as a linebacker, setting a school record for a person other than a secondary man catching, you know, interceptions. A Virginia Tech yeah. good football school. Second down and 10, following Hipple's brush with death. <laughs> Here's the misdirection fake. Hipple with a lot of time. Good throw to Chadwick. Chadwick reversing, going to the 23-yard line. Excellent call by the quarterback, Coach Bob Baker. Now you'll see the receiver on the top of your screen coming underneath the coverage. It's a double zone coverage. He gets back underneath right there, 47. Dexter Cleanscale, see the big hole? He's not covered tightly because he's in the heart of a zone. The play action throws everybody else. Now he's a running back. Dennis Thurman has to make the play, number 32. 23 yards, Hipple to Chadwick. First and 10 on the 23-yard line, going in. 10-0 Detroit. Hipple straight back. He's being chased, but now he's going to unload it on the run and overthrows. I believe Leonard Thompson was the nearest receiver. That was an impromptu. Every, every receiver has a scramble rule, and the pattern breaks down, and the quarterback starts to leave the pocket. They all have an assigned spot to head to, and in that case, I'd say Leonard Thompson went to the right spot. He headed to the end zone. Coach, can I ask you a question? 
how good is the offensive blocking because they don't seem to put much pressure on him you can right see now. right now he has good time he's gonna he's looking over to the left he doesn't get what he wants he's looking for the corner pattern it's doubled inside and outside now he gets scrambling to the right look at chadwick 39 on your screen Ooh, inches away from a big one i don't think chadwick was open i believe they were laying off and going to pick off that pass they had him on oh good call coach we'll talk about that offensive blocking because the lions have really done a pretty good job second down and ten gets to the 10-yard line, but there's a flag thrown at the 30-yard line, and Randy White's in a fight. That's why the blocking perhaps has been so effective. <laughs> Daryl Rogers does not like to have the headset on, Tommy. Holding said. number 72, offense, still second down. He doesn't like to have the headset, he says, because he loses the flow of the game. He doesn't like the play-by-play -play situation. Here's the holding. Randy White, 54. Now here's Jeff Coat, number 77. I didn't really see a good holding penalty in that one, did you, Tom? Well, they called Dietrich, but I thought Randy White was the one that was probably doing the punching out there. I've known an official that made a mistake from time to time. Oh, uh, not many. Jeff Coat was the person held on that stunt. Second down and 20 on the 33-yard line. The draw play. Oh. Jones smothered by Jeff Coat. That's the Arizona State guy that Daryl Rogers used to coach. Yeah. They really like him here. I've never, I've never really seen uh, or or red materials by Tom Landry in regard to being so excited about a player like number 77, Jim Jeffcoat. See him at the top of your screen. He comes in on a stunt. See him? He's coming in after the quarterback. He gets the draw. But Tom Landry is really open about how much he likes this guy's effort and his attitude toward playing the game. Remember, he was second in sacks only to Randy White last year. He had 11 and a half on what they call an off here in Dallas. Most people would love to go 9 and 7. Coming it's after. third down and 21. to McCall. Far short of anything needed for a first down. Great strategy on the part of the Dallas Cowboys. They know that the Detroit Lions use a hot receiver when they run those safety blitzes. They brought the blitz, they dumped it off, and they tackle them because they have so far to go, they can't possibly make the first down on a little looky. I think Coach Landry and Jim Myers, you see, they realize that the new Coach Rogers has a pretty darn good game plan. He's going to stay with it. Here's Murray's second field goal attempt. It'll be a 46 yarder if it's good. There's a flag down. Let's see who it's on. But that kick was dead solid, perfect. He's 64% in his career from that distance, so it's not a surprise that he made it. He's a tough little egg, too, you know it. Yes, he is. 177 pounds. He's over 60. Offside, number 22. Defense, penalty decline. Field goal is good. Victor Scott, the back was offside. 13 0. Detroit. He knows it's good. He knows it's good. Giving that extra effort makes winners. Be all you can be. Sponsored by the U.S. Army. The highest rated quarterback in NFL history is San Francisco's Joe Montana. What stands Montana cut above the rest is his second effort nature. His ability to see a play through stretches the defense, and he often turns a potential loss of yardage into six points. By always seeking every possible way into the end zone, even at the cost of sacrificing his own body, Joe Montana is the best he can be. Technology is taking over the world. You can keep up with it, or you're going to be left behind. That's why I joined the Army. From microchip circuitry to laser technology, the world's largest school for high-tech skills is the Army. Bravo, go active. Bravo, lock, zero five. Be all that you can be. I don't intend to get left behind. Find your future in the Army. Eddie Murray from Tulane just got his 501st point. Only puts him third on the all-time Lions scoring list. He is quite a kicker. I tell you, this guy is quite a person. You know, he's won the Miller Man of the Year Award or a nominee 
nominated for it for all the activities and his contributions to charities and time and all that kind of stuff. He's really a well-rounded guy, Tom. And the second all-time percentage kicker in this league. He's going to hang around. He's he's young. He's just getting it started. I think I'll become his agent. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're going to be in our next life. We're going to come back as an agent, right? <laughs> Number three, kicking Levette and Poe, two brilliant young people for the Cowboys, will be waiting for this run back. A hand is up from the 35. This is a high kick, very, very high. That is Poe at the nine. Poe looking for the wedge, and it disappears. Number 36, Mead, the running back, made a good tackle. One of the fiercest rivalries in college football will be renewed next Saturday when the Georgia Bulldogs battle the Clemson Tigers. You know you can expect hard hitting in that one. These two teams go. They've split the last three meetings. Don't get mad at me for not knowing math. That means that each one has won and they've had one tie. Georgia, though, came from behind last year to win 26-23. Don't miss it. Clemson, Georgia. Saturday at 3.30 Eastern Time, 12.30 Pacific on CBS Sports. 14-yard line, first and 10, Danny White. The screen pass to Dorsett. He's got blockers. Good defensive play. Harrell, the linebacker, somehow got under the blockers and made the stop. Danny White's getting knocked around a little back there. Now, this is a screen. Granted, it, they're going to let some people get after him, but big Bill Gay, number 79, old Will Gay beats Paz Derrick to the outside. He gets the screen pass off, but he still accepts the punishment. That grows on you there in that third and fourth quarter. I tell you, I think Dallas is sleepwalking. Bentley, they're not in it right now. Could be second down and seven. All the eighteen right across the middle. Dorsett short of the first down at the 22. He's grabbed and held on by Angelo King, former friend. Danny White's first play was a screen intercepted by William Gay, and that's the way Dallas started, and it's really been sort of downhill this first half. I think that it's a mental down. I, you have to give Detroit credit for playing as well as they're playing. But it's Dallas is not the same football team we saw play Monday night, nor that I saw and you saw play on film this weekend prior to today. I don't think Detroit's the same team I saw play Atlanta last week either. <laughs> Hey, good yeah, point, you know, Coach. They, good they, point. But if, if you're going to get ready to play somebody, now you mentioned, Dick, that when you were with the Eagles and you were the head man, you planned on beating Dallas or trying to beat them. Everybody wants to knock them off, don't they? Well, Dallas, in the, you know, through the 70s and late 70s, they were the number one team in football. And the, the, in the organization, the super organization, great management and everything else. So we set them up as the, the epitome. We set them at, up as our target. We felt if we could beat them, we could go ahead and win the conference. So we just set them up every week. Here's right. one. Huh? Scores from elsewhere. Miami's still having trouble getting all the wheels back on their machine. 13 to 7. Boy, the Colts are playing the heck out of them today. Yeah, they're coming back off a bad one last week. Jets 14, Buffalo 3. Any coaches in trouble in that one? We don't know. <laughs> we don't talk about coaches changing jobs. No, we don't talk about that. Otherwise, Chicago. You'll, huh? you'll be up for every job in the country if we do that. Chicago no. 10, New England nothing. They're almost at halftime. 14 14 oh hannafin it's got those cardinals playing don't forget coming up the giants against green bay a lot of you will see atlanta against san francisco new orleans and denver minnesota and tampa bay those are all good games right here on cbs it's our doubleheader day and we thank you and we love it third down and short 157 left before halftime this might be one of the best halves of detroit Lions football that I've ever seen in the last few years. It's the best defense I've seen them play. It's the best defense I've seen them play. And Hipple seems like he's gotten himself really settled down and is going to have, uh, even though they're injured and beat up a little bit, they're going to play pretty decently. Third down and two on the 23 yard line. The shotgun. A three man rush to start with. This is Renfro, throws behind Renfro, and James Harrell was right there. Boy, number 58's played a good defensive game. 
He was supposed to start at the right-hand side linebacking spot, and they put him back on left when Van Teddy went down. That's right. Here's a guy, you know, he was here in 1979. He went into the USFL, played there a couple of years. He's come back here, and now he's playing like a starter. You know, that happens many times. You know, a guy that hasn't been a starter gets his chance, and he plays like one and remains one. Mike Saxon kicking. He will be putting the foot to it at about his own 11-yard line. This is Manley waiting for it, the rookie. Manley, fair catches, and you got to put that hand all the way up this year and show it. A 38-yard putt, no return, no fumble, and some half. As Landry looks at his notes, we'll be right back. It's Detroit 13, Dallas zip. Tom Brookshire with Dick Vermeil up at the Silver Dome in Pontiac. Don't forget at halftime, we'll have all the scores from the other games, and Brent and Herb will bring us up to date with the highlights, and Billy Sims will be live. And boy, this crowd, this beautiful crowd here in Detroit, they miss their great runner. A man from Hooks, Texas will be on live, and he's trying to get that knee back in shape, and he'll talk to Brent about it. So stick around with us, will you? First and 10, 144 left before halftime. Detroit has the ball. That's all they want right now. Oh, Hipple's hit as he gets rid of it. Young Eastman, number 42, Ricky, climbed the receiver. I believe Wilbert Montgomery out of the backfield was the intended receiver. Jim Jeffcoat will appear to the right side of your screen, a defensive end, 77. He gets some heat on him, a little play action draw fake. Boom, gets the hit right there. You know something? That was a dangerous throw. It was a double zone, double zone with guys just sitting up there. It should have been picked off. And a rookie, Lomas Brown, is blocking Jeffcoat. I'd be looking that way a lot, or at least knowing where everybody is. Second down and 10. Ball's on the 40. Hand off. Payne. Payne breaks through. Gets to the 47-yard line. Flags are down at the 45 of Detroit. This young man's been a Detroit, then a, went away to somewhere else came back he with the Washington Redskins you know and he played for Daryl Rogers he played for Daryl Rogers at San Jose State little reverse pivot handoff now watch him break watch him break off the block right here see him cut back in that hole they're in a nickel defense Bates gets blocked he gives him a little move there Michael Downs 26 comes in and puts him down Wilbert Montgomery <laughs> gives Dennis Thurman oh. a shot Rick Kane he's moving around a little bit holding number 72 offense still second down Young teams and new programs occasionally make mistakes. Last week, the Lions had 11 penalties in the winning game against Atlanta. You can't do that much. Dietrich was called holding Randy White, which sounds like a good idea to me, but you can't do it legally. <laughs> sounds like a heck of an idea. Wiped out a 12-yard gain. It's now second and 20. Kane inside. Boy, he hits the hole fast. Out over the 40 to the 41. Peg leg Bates in on the staff there for the for the Cowboys. Looks like the Dallas defense is getting a little bit nasty now. Do you sense a little bit of well, irrational behavior there? Uh, well, I saw Randy White exchanging some words with Keith Dorney. That would be a heck of a match, huh? That'd be 15-16. How two big gorillas out there going after each other. But you know something? I think Darrell is using a good approach right here. It would be wrong to try to get the ball downfield and risk interception and give Dallas something excited to go off into the halftime locker room about, Tom. You know, gotcha. I think keep them in this frame of mind right now. They're getting whipped. Ed Tutal Jones. What do you think Tom's going to say at halftime? Oh, boy, I don't know. He'll never let us in there to find out. <laughs> but I'll tell you, he's going to be fair with them. He's going to tell them if they don't start playing, they're going to get whipped. And it'll be a long airplane ride on the spaceship to Dallas. He has been in this situation many times, so he will know how to handle it. Hey, the Jets are moving again, Tom. 21 to 3. Joe Walton's got him, got him going. He's got everybody signed at least now for the most part and back in camp. Washington having a lot of trouble with Houston. And we told you early in the year that we think the Oilers have some young players that can really go, including Moon, their quarterback. He's got two more wins now. He's always the all-time active coach in this league. He's got two more wins than Don Shula right now. That's pretty good company. Huh? Pretty good company. First half started out with a turnover by Dallas, an interception, then a fumble, and boy, I'll tell you, the Lions jumped right on it, got a field goal and a touchdown. Then they came down and got one on their own, and they are really riding out this first half in glory. 119 left before half, it's third and nine. Looks like they're coming after him here with a blitz. Everybody's back getting ready, and they run straight at it. It's Kane. 
as we told you, Jones, Jones has an injured thigh, we're told, as Bates gets into a little shoving match with Kane. Yeah, that, I think really that kind of stuff, when a guy's down on the ground, you go in and wrestle on him, be the big tough, be tough before he gets on the ground. Knock him on his tail, but don't do all that other stuff. Remember what Thurman told us, that they were so bad against their own offense out of Thousand Oaks that they had to tell the defense to stop banging on our people so much. <laughs> They're a rather aggressive group. Yeah, they are. That guy is one of the real aggressive football players. He played in the Pro Bowl last year as the special teams player out of the NFC. How did Dallas get so many free agents, though, and they become, they fit into that program so well? They do a good job of that, don't well, they? they Gilbrandt, all of them? They bring in enough of them, huh? Their philosophy is if you bring in enough of them, you're going to find one. And they bring guys in and fit their mold by computer. And they go out and sign them. And they bring them in. And they have on their roster right now 12 free agents. Three of their starting secondary people are free agents. I think it's real smart football. Well, do they have a better computer than everybody else? The, uh, an underground computer system? What's... No, they spend more money, number one. And number two, their criteria for success is not based on how much money they make at the end of the year. It's how many games they win. And I'll tell you, it's nice to coach in that kind of an atmosphere. I went out to their new big establishment they're going to have for their practice field outside of Dallas the other day. Uh, they call it Cowboy Land. It's going to be the 300-room hotel. It is a fantastic organization. Mike Black is back to punt. Leon Gonzalez to accept it. This rookie is tall. He's thin but fun. Look out. He can really run. Hey, that was a rhyme. <laughs> a little play. I didn't know you were a poet. Oh, sure. I got through the University of Colorado. <laughs> Here goes the snap now. Black is just wanting to kick it away. They're only 50 seconds left. Oh, this is a tremendous putt. Gonzalez at the 15. Gonzalez at the 13. 4.38? Yeah, 4-4 four, four hang time. Pretty good job. You can stay in the league if you kick enough of those. 42 seconds left on the clock. There's Black. I told you they have a special fraternity. He'll go over now and talk to Eddie Murray. They had their own little meetings, you know, about two people show up for it. You know, you got to watch Dallas in this situation. I can remember being in the same situation, but they were ahead. But right before the half in Dallas, and they hit Tony Dorsett on a little dinky screen right in the middle, a middle screen, and he took it the length of the field. Can you believe that? Yes, I can, because... You saw his play. <laughs> and, you know, and every play, though, he almost breaks it. And that's the kind of team that does strike fear. First and ten. Call it the... 17 yard line if you want to. The shotgun's on. The Here it is. On. Here's the screen and Gay almost hit the ball. Gay catches Dorset from behind at the 27. William Gay almost got the pass and then got the ball carrier. That wasn't the middle screen, that was a screen left, but they are a great screening team in this situation, and it's not a surprise to me that they came with one on the first down. The shotgun now as the seconds roll off. Wide is sacked, but the flags are down. Williams got the sack. Flags are down. That's his second sack this year, and he's coming out of nowhere. He hardly even played a snap last year. He had nine tackles and no sacks, and here he is a starter. Attitude change. They told me Doug English talked to him and said, look, are you going to be a good player or are you just going to be one of the guys? <laughs> Twelve men on the field. Defense. Oh, my gosh. That's Dallas and Detroit. Field. It worked, didn't it? It did the last time. <laughs> We'll try to show the people later on today that infamous moment back in 1981. Now, Darrell Rogers, good college man that he comes from, a good background. He wouldn't be doing that on purpose. So you. No, no. Wayne Fonts right next to him there. Now, he's an SC guy. He might try to slip a guy in on you once in a while. That's editorial, coach. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Rogers is checking on it. Dur Don't forget at halftime, Brent and Irv will have... The scores and the highlights. Billy Sims will be on live. Find out all about his new baby and that old Nia his that he's got to get back in shape. One of the great ball players of our time. 14 seconds. You got the window right there. Cosby catches it at the 42. Now the hurry up is on. The seconds are ticking. Johnson making the stop. Last play coming up. It is going out of bounds. And he wipes back. Going across the middle. Cosby breaks a tackle. Cosby at the 45. Bruce McNaughton tackling him there.
You know it's just beginning if you know Dallas. It's Detroit 13.